Welcome to this satisfactory tutorial where I will explain the basics of pipes, pipeline pumps, basic fluid dynamics and of course how you set up your coal generators. With update 3, Coffee Stain Studios added pipes and fluid dynamics to the game and the coal generator is probably the first building that you want to build which will require a steady supply of water which means that you need to build water extractors, pipes and possibly pipeline pumps. Let's start with the basics of water dynamics. One of these extractors will produce splash uh, up to or it will produce 120 cubic meters of water per minute. Whereas one stretch of pipe can sustain up to 300 cubic meters of water or whatever other fluid you might be transporting inside of it per minute. You also have to take verticality into consideration when you are setting up your fluid systems because the water extractor itself, um, I am not familiar with how this uh, works for other uh, fluids, um, but the water extractor can make uh, enough pressure to push the water up 10 meters. And this means that you need to place pipeline pumps uh, and each pipeline pumps that you place can extend that by a further 20 meters. But do note that that means 20 meters above the pump that you place. So if you chain two pumps together, this does not mean that you're pumping the fluid 40 meters above the second pump. Um, you actually need to place pumps at less than 20 meters spacing apart and each pump adds a further 20 meters of pressure to the pipes. Now let's uh, run upstairs where I have the uh, coal generators and have a look at them. So each coal generator consumes one coal per four seconds, or in simpler terms, 15 coal per minute. In addition, it also consumes 45 cubic meters of water per minute, but note that it can hold 50. At the time that you're building your first coal generators, you probably have MK2 belts, so that is what I'm using as a baseline for this tutorial. Since each coal generator consumes 15 coal per minute, that means that one MK2 belt, which can transport 120 items per minute, can fuel 8 coal generators. If you're using MK1 belts for some reason, you need to halve this, num half this number, since an MK1 belt will transport 60 items per minute, and thus is only able to fuel 4 coal generators. With 8 coal generators, this means that you need 360 cubic meters of water per minute. Thus, you need 3 water extractors, as I have down here, for this setup. But since a pipe can only transport 300 cubic meters of water per minute, you need to set this up with care to ensure that the last 2 coal generators in the uh, line also get enough water. On this demonstration setup that I have made here, I have three water extractors running beneath the platform that I've built the uh, coal generators on top of. Two of them are joined together down there with a pipeline junction cross down at the ground level. And above that junction I have a pump, since the water needs to travel more than 10 meters to get up to the platform. This means that this pipe here is transporting 240 cubic meters of water per minute from those two pumps down there. The third water extractor has its own pipeline and also its own pump. And uh, this is to ensure that the final generators in the setup gets water. I'm connecting the pipe from that water generator to the fourth junction. Uh, that's um, sends water into generator number four. Technically you could attach the pipe on junction uh, five or junction six, but I believe that the optimum point of connection is here at generator four to ensure that all the pipes are always saturated to the uh, maximum extent with this setup. Pipes will also handily show you the direction and the saturation inside of uh, them with these handy flow indicators that you can see here. As you can see there are three rings and they f pulsate very gently and the gentleness of the pulsation is because the pipe is uh, saturated as you can see by this. Even though the flow rate is not at maximum the pipe is full. And this one is pulsating from left to right, as you can see. 
which obviously means that the water inside is flowing towards the right. If the pipe is not full, the distance between the three rings will be shorter, and if it is empty, the three rings will just stay together like this. You can also click on the pipe to see how full it is, as I've already shown. And you can also flush the segment, or you can even flush the entire pipe network by using the lever here. So that pushed them uh, or contracted them a bit, but they quickly move out again. It is also important to note that both the water extractors and the pumps require power. So if you're setting up a coal generator array somewhere outside of your main base and you haven't already connected it up to the power network of your main base, you might want to bring with you enough resources to build a biomass burner and some fuel to start it. Each water extractor requires 20 power and each pump requires 4 power, so you can kickstart one extractor and two pumps with one biomass burner. Just remember to connect the coal generators that you're starting up to the same power grid so that they can take over powering the extractors and pumps when you remove the biomass burner that you use to kickstart the process. Finally, keep in mind that a full 8x4 foundation or a wall is 4 meters high, so that is an excellent way to keep track of the height and where you need to place your pumps if you are transporting a fluid up a longer distance than what I am doing in this short tutorial here. And with that, I just want to remind you to keep in mind that Satisfactory, like most production line games, is a game where you should never be afraid to tear down something that you've built and rebuild it. Creating a factory that you feel is perfect to your specific style of building is not something you should expect to happen in one single game session. When you make a mistake, learn from it, learn from others, watch tutorials and let's plays, and with each new playthrough, you will see that your building style and that your factory efficiency improve every time you build a new factory. And just one final little note about the water pumps. They have a direction, so you can turn them around. So make sure that the arrows are pointing the correct way when you place them down. Thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you all next time.